This video is on how to clean the Walther PPX. I know everyone has their own way of doing things, including myself, so for training purposes, we're just going to go right along with the owner's manual. To get started, you'll need a few things. CLP, a boar snake, cleaning patches, or in this case, a cut-up t-shirt, a nylon brush, a bronze boar brush, and a jag. I didn't put it in the picture, but you'll also need cotton swabs. You can get any of this stuff from your local sporting goods store, or you can get it from Amazon. I'll put links to everything in the notes below. Always start out with a clear and empty weapon. Keep it pointed in a safe direction, even if you think it's unloaded. And of course, we're going to double check and make sure it's unloaded before we get started here. To do that, press the magazine release button located on the left-hand side of the weapon, just behind the trigger guard. Drop the magazine. Keep your finger outside the trigger guard and work the slide a few times. If there's any ammo inside, it's going to eject at this point. Because I took the magazine out, the slide's no longer going to lock back by itself. So to lock it back, pull the slide all the way to the rear, then push up on the slide stop lever. Rotate your takedown lever to the 6 o'clock position. Now press the slide stop lever downward and guide the slide off of the frame. Remove the recoil spring by pressing from chamber end to muzzle end. Now you can just grab onto the lug and pull the barrel right out. And this is as far as you need to go for a basic field strip. You have your slide, your barrel, your recoil spring, and your frame. And also your magazine, which is off screen right now. You don't need to clean these parts in any particular order, but I'm going to start with the frame today. Add CLP to a nylon brush and start scrubbing the frame inside and out, all surfaces. And don't worry about leaving any excess CLP or anything slippery on the outside of the frame. You're going to wipe all of that off. The outside of the frame is going to be totally dry when you're done. You just want to get off all the dirt and fouling for now. You want to be very thorough on the inside of the frame. Pay particular attention to the front and rear rail guides and anything that you see evidence of metal on metal wear. The best way to get the excess CLP off of the grip is just wrap a towel around it and squeeze. Make sure to get all the excess CLP off of the outside of the frame. It's polymer, so you don't necessarily need to have it on there. It's not going to hurt it, but you just don't want anything slippery if you're trying to grab onto this. Now I'm going to go through and find detail with a clean cotton swab. When this one gets dirty, I'll toss it, grab another swab, add CLP to it, and keep repeating the process until the swabs start to come out totally clean. Now that the frame's totally clean, I'm going to add one drop of CLP to all four slide guides and also the front and rear of the trigger bar. Let's get started on the slide. Add CLP to your nylon brush and start scrubbing all surfaces, inside and out. Clean everything well, but give special attention to the rail channels. Me and the guys from my squad shot this gun all day long, so right now it's filthy. Scrub the breech face really well, but make sure you don't leak CLP down into that channel that the firing pin comes out of. I'm being really careful cleaning the breech face, but if you think you need to, turn the slide pointed muzzle downward just to make sure CLP won't leak down into it. Make sure you get behind the extractor with your brush. Here's a close-up. Okay, I've got all the dirt loosened up on the inside of the slide. I'm going to add more CLP to the brush and start scrubbing the outside. I'm going to wipe off the excess CLP from the slide. Okay, I got the loose dirt off of the slide. I'm going to go through and find detail with the cotton swab. Add CLP to the cotton swab and start going through it. Start with the rail channels and make your way through all surfaces. Once I see the cotton swab is dirty, I toss it, get a new one, add CLP, and repeat the process until the swabs start coming out clean. Once the slide's clean, put one drop of CLP on the safety plunger, one on the disconnector cut, and one on the stripper rail. Now I'm going to clean the recoil spring. It's actually called the recoil guide rod assembly, but that takes too long to say, so I'm just going to say recoil spring for short. 
Add CLP to the nylon brush and start scrubbing the coils, then scrub both ends. Wipe it off and you're done. Grab your bore brush, make sure it's bronze or nylon. Don't use steel or anything like that. Make sure it's the correct caliber. On the side, it's going to say 357, like this one, 9mm, 38, or 380. Attach it to your cleaning rod. As you're pushing the brush through the bore, make sure you're holding onto the rod by the handle. This is going to allow the bore brush to spin freely within the rifling. If you were to just grab the rod and push the brush straight through, the brush is going to scrape right on top of the rifling and you won't get a thorough clean. Now I'm only going to push the brush through in one direction, chambering to muslin. It doesn't make any sense at all to push the dirt out, then pull it right back in. So what I'm going to do is push the brush through, remove it, pull the rod out, put the brush back on, and repeat the process. Once again, chambering to muslin, only one direction. This is the way you would clean a high precision rifle, so why not clean your pistol the same way? It only takes a few extra seconds. Take pride in ownership and give attention to detail when cleaning your weapon. You never know when you might need it. So now take the jag, attach it to your cleaning rod, put a cleaning patch over it, add CLP. And just like the brush, you can only push it through in one direction, chamber in to muzzle in. Keep pushing patches through until they start to come out clean. Once the bore is clean, add CLP to the nylon brush and scrub the outside of the barrel. By the way, most people just call this entire piece the barrel, but it actually has different parts to it. That's the lug. That's the feed ramp. This whole thing is called the chamber. The top of it's called the hood. And the inside is called the bore. This feed ramp is really dirty right now, so I'm going to use the nylon brush and scrub it the best I can. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to get my rag and dig my fingernail into it. And if that still doesn't work, I'm going to get the bronze bore brush and just lightly go over it and scrape the feed ramp just a little bit, then wipe it off with a rag and it should be spotless. Now I said I do everything per the owner's manual, but I do take one little extra step just to be thorough. I use a bore snake. It's really great for removing any excess CLP that may still be inside the bore because you don't want excess CLP inside it. You want the bore to be dry. So if you choose to use the bore snake, make sure you're using the correct caliber. In this case, it's going to say 9mm right there in the weighted end. Just take the weighted end, put it in from chamber end to muzzle end, grab the weight from the other side, and pull it through. Do this a couple times, and you should be good to go. And this is why I use a bore snake. It looks perfect. Not even a speck of dust in there. Looks like black glass. Apply a light coat of lubricant to all outer surfaces, especially where you can see metal on metal wear. It's not necessary to disassemble the magazine every time I clean. If I dropped it in mud or dirt or sand or something like that, of course I would, but in this case, it just needs a wipe down. So I add a little bit of CLP to the rag and I go through all outer surfaces the best I can and I'm very careful not to leak CLP down into the follower or the witness holes. I'm gonna give it one final wipe down with a dry rag just to make sure there's no excess CLP left on the magazine. If you do need to disassemble the magazine, it's not very hard. I don't think you need a video to do it. Just find a punch or a similar tool, press that button at the bottom of the floor plate, slide the floor plate off, the spring and follower will come out, clean it, and put it back the same way. And just like the outside of the magazine, you don't need to leave excess CLP inside the magazine or any of the parts inside. Put CLP on it, clean it off, but make sure it's dry when you reassemble. And this is just the button I was talking about in the bottom of the floor plate. Now that all the parts are clean, it's time to reassemble. Take the barrel and put it back in the slide. Make sure you have the correct lockup, meaning it should look just like that. Now grab the recoil spring. The small end goes to the muzzle end. Of course, that flat part goes to the chamber end. Push it in muzzle end first, then release tension on the spring, and it should look just like that. Now before you put the slide back on, make sure the takedown lever is pointed down in the six o'clock position. I say that because sometimes it moves up by itself or maybe you accidentally moved it like I did. Anyway, make sure it's down in six o'clock position, grab the slide, line it up with the rails, and pull it all the way back to the rear. Once the slide is in the rearmost position, push up on the slide lock to lock it in place. Return the takedown lever to the original position, release the slide stop lever, and let the slide go home. Let's do a function check. Pull the trigger. You'll feel and hear it click, but don't let it go. Work the slide. Release the trigger, you'll hear it click. 
pull it again, the hammer drops, you're good to go. I also like to make sure my slide's going to lock back on an empty chamber, so I insert an empty magazine, pull the slide back, and it should lock back. It does, so I'm going to release the slide stop lever, let the slide go home, and I'm done. I made this video for total beginners, so I hope it helped you out. If this is your first gun, you made an awesome choice. It's a great shooter, it's accurate, completely reliable, has a fantastic trigger, and it's just fun to shoot. This PPX belongs to Dr. Hinojosa. He was nice enough to let me borrow it so I could do this cleaning video. As you can see, the PPX functions just fine in cold weather. It was about 20 degrees when we filmed this video and we were outside all day long. Shot all different types of ammo, zero malfunctions. If you like this video, buy something from us at skullcrush.com. Angarda, pus ule. Shit, I never miss.